Make time to celebrate your accomplishments, no matter how big or small. OGS Gentle Committee of Friends presents a special documentary to celebrate my Lord DBJ as part of a grand reception in honor of my Lord Honorable Justice Demola Bakre Jr. Get ready to be inspired by his story in this package titled Justice Demola Bakre Jr. His life, his struggles, his values. Um, Honorable Justice Demola Bakre. Um, I was born in the mid 60s by Alaja Bakre and Honorable Justice Bakre. He's like me. I am a son of a very liberal man. Demola is the only boy. Among the four of us, we're four in the family. He's the only boy, but the second child. In the middle of the night, you just find him in his study. You think he's sleeping, you find him in his study. And as the eldest child, I was responsible for looking after them. And at some point, I was responsible for taking them all to school. My father was very liberal growing up. When he was younger, he so loved his sleep that if he has slept at about 7 30, he will prefer to forgo his supper. His supper. Then the following morning, he will ask, It's not about the time of the day, it's about my entitlement, my dinner as a son is a right whether i took it or i did not take it it should be presented before breakfast if i now choose not to eat it it will be my prerogative but to be denied dinner we cannot get to breakfast until dinner is satisfied if you let him do talking like i'm doing now you can stay till 12 a.m but ask him to go and read by 9.30, he was to go and sleep. For me, those were things that shaped me as a child. As a kid, he was very impatient. He would get curious. He would try to run ahead before he could, you know, do things, trying to go very fast. But even now, as an adult, and that is why I enjoy what I do as a judge, sincerely, I see beyond the technicalities of the law. For me, I say it, and I don't hesitate to say it in open court, that I'm a judge for justice, not a judge for judgment. Demola has one thing. It's not because he's my son. He does not jump into matters. When you are talking, he keeps quiet. As if he knew he was going to be a judge. He's a good listener. And when he talks, he's independent. He's not partial. Because he will, he, will, he will scream and shout at you just like that. Once he feels that, you know, you are doing the wrong thing. This is not what you are supposed to do. You are not getting it right. I think he was lucky. When he was growing up, he had an elder sister. Then, his sister, junior sister back there was probably to his own, they were close in age. So he didn't know how to do anything in the house. Those are the people who are cooking for him. They were like food a lot. But he doesn't know how to cook. But he's so blessed with sisters. So anywhere he turns to, he wants to eat. Until he had to go and live in Abuja. That he knew that he had to cook. When I went there, his, cooker, his food had no salt. 
I eat what I cook, what I can cook, I eat. He had to learn how to cook after he had grown up. A few weeks ago, I went on Google to learn how to make a pala. He, he, he entered the kitchen. No, the, the mother was there, the sisters were there to cook for him. I recall my sister and put her on video call. And she'll be telling me, oh, yeah, put this, put that, put that. I don't think that, um, yeah, I remember my sister used to say, my older sister used to say, hey, you keep saying that this one is a man's job, that one is a man's job. When I have three sisters, why should I be bothered about cooking? I grew up being pampered by the three of them, being pampered by my sisters. But I learned a lot of things, and I'm sure they also learned a lot of things from me. Demola is somebody that has, that has this attitude of, I want my people around me. It's always like a rallying point for friends and family. Even his friends can testify to that. Demola want people around him every time. Reliable, dependable, honest, a friend, a very good friend. I grew up knowing him as a big brother, not even a cousin. He's been there all my life. He's been a cheerful giver. He reached out to me every time that I'm drowning. He tried to um, save me. Uh, Demola and I part crossed, I think, either 89 or 1990 when we were in the Oste University together. Uh, Justice Demola back there is a great guy, cool, calculated guy, and very sincere guy, very reliable as well. I congratulate him on this world deserved position. May God continue to give him the wisdom to do the job the way it ought to be done. I've known Demola for decades. We started together as friends during the creation of Ogun State in 1976. We started playing cricket together. Then to African Afro Grams. Then to Ogun Poli before he went to um, Ogun State University. He's been a very solid backbone in everything I've been doing in my life. To this honorable man, this great man, this man that has been my uh, Mentor, friend, brother, Egmont, and what have you. Um, I remember when we formed a serious relationship back then, uh, when I got into Gunsei University and he was already well accomplished in the school. I was a, what you call a jambite. And uh, he, he took me under his wings, he looked after me. And it was a very sad departure when I had to leave Aga, um, Ijebubo to head to a way to start my own life as a science student. Um, he's a great man. His sense of music is amazing. His sense of humor, oh my God, can't fault it. Um, he has done very well. I am truly, truly proud of him. Um, he's someone I look up to and he's always very supportive. Um, what he has achieved so far is very deserving life very deserve enough and uh, I'm sure that the sky is beginning of the limit. Mola is a man with a mad heart. He accommodates everybody, both young and old. He forgives easily. He gives and gives and gives at all times. Ask him to give you his eyes, he will plug them and give to you. Like it's just one of those things. Even when you wrong him, I came back from youth service with a pair of Dunlop trainers that I treasured so much. Ah, Dunlop trainers in those days. So the mother was begging me for this. Sister, you don't need these trainers now. Uh -uh, give it to me. I said, no, I'm not giving you. Eventually, I gave him the trainers. Huh. Guess my, what my brother did. He gave those trainers away that very day. The very day he took them from me was the day he gave them away. I just looked out the window later in the day in the afternoon and there was one of his friends walking away with the trainers. Uh -uh. And I called him and was like, Dimala, what happened? Those are the trainers you took from me this morning. You were begging, begging, begging. Hey, sister, I'm going to bear me. 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 
He has a downside, people. If I come back to this world, I will still pick Demola as my elder brother. And if I had to choose, I would choose Demola Rakri all over again as my brother. The woman in his life, his wife, his sisters, and well, our mom of pleasant memory. He's always quite protective of all of us. You can't cheat me while Demola is there. You can't bully me while Demola is there. And one thing that I like about Demola going up is Demola will look out for me in school, at home, anywhere we are. Demola was trying to drive. He was not even 10 years old and he was trying to drive. We were on our way out of the house. Those of us kids going to school and our parents going to work. It was very early on a weekday. So we had packed for anybody who knows Osho Sami Road in Ibadan. And it was like a stopy road. So we were at the, like at the upper end of the road. My dad parked the car just in front of the house and our parents quickly ran into the house to go and you know, quickly say hello to the couple that just had a baby. As soon as they left, Demola, myself and the house help were sitting in the back of the car. Demola rigged up front and released the handbrake. Can you imagine? He released the handbrake and the car started moving. Screams. I couldn't do anything. I didn't know how to stop the car. I didn't know what to do. Nobody knew what to do. But it was the gutter that stopped the car. That baby that they had then, that, that baby, that was Buki Majakudomi. Now Buki Bakri. Can you believe that? Yes. I got married in 1999 to my university girlfriend, Bukola, and um, I must say that she has been really supportive. We have two children, two boys, Bulwa Tife and Tiwalunua. Hi, my name is Bulwa Tife, and all I wanted to say is that my dad is very wonderful, very helpful, and thank you for the opportunity for, for allowing me to talk about him and big congrats to him. Thank you. We got married and Bukola traveled like three days after we got married. That trip we thought it was just for a while, but that trip took her 12 years. Three days after we got married, she traveled and we lived apart for about 12 years. Those years were trying period because when we came back together, it was difficult. I was independent, she was independent. But all along, I was going to see them. Then they were in Dublin, Ireland. She was taking care of the children all by herself. But because we are friends, we have been able to survive. People say that when you sit down with your wife, people don't even know that it's your wife, the banters that will be throwing and the things. And then um, it's been wonderful. I'm grateful to her. I'm really grateful to her for uh, input in my life because I know that um, she has been supportive. That's why I am where I am today. All our husbands know that Demola wants to hear good news about us. I don't see Demola Bakri. I don't see a brother in my him. I see a friend. I see a brother. And I uh, thank God for, for that. And back then, when I was going after Jolapo, he moves around with this uh, car, Toyota Crown, WE5818. It's that period, he would tell me, the laptop back is at uh, Ashiro, at this Anglican uh, diocese or whatever. But before I rolled my B2 there, I said, the mother has taken her away, that they have gone to Bishop's Court. Before I get there, I'll just see the Toyota Crown driving out of Bishop's Court. Right? What type of man is this? Why is he just so protective of the, of the sister? Because since both of us were together at home most of the time, of course, any outing will go together. My name is Bumi Orekoya, son of Dolakwa Orekoya. What I love most about Justice Demola Bakre is that he encourages me to play golf more, and I love him for that. I'm surprised that he now likes sports. He would not play football, not do anything when he was younger. 
I attended um, various primary schools due to circumstances of my birth. Up until 1976, before the creation of state, I was at um, UMC Ibadro. Upon the creation of state in 76, I moved to Abeokuta, finished primary school in Abeokuta, gained admission to Comprehensive High School Ayetoro, then later moved to African Church Grammar School Ayetoro, also had a stint at Abeokuta Grammar School here in Abeokuta. From there, I did A level at Ogupoli and ended up at Ogun State University. I did a degree in English first, then went back to do a degree in law and went to the Nigerian Law School. The only Nigerian Law School then it was the Lagos Law School. From there, I started my career as a lawyer. I started incidentally with um, the firm of um, Ayolaja Adesonya and Co. at Ilukweju, where I worked for a number of years. Then started a partnership with my childhood friends, Lulu Onobolu and Tokumbo Shuremi, where we had Onobolu, Shuremi and Bakri at Suleri in Lagos. I remember that our office then was a melting point for young upcoming people. Right there in the building, we had two architects working in the building with us, Yemegwe Emi and Tolu Martins. We had um, Soji Onunga running his accounting practice. We had different friends coming in and out of the office, all of us trying to start up in life. It was very interesting. Even those of our friends that were all over the place doing different things found it very convenient to come in with us later in the evening. I remember Mr. Yolusoya of eSpace who dropped by Olumide Odunton, then trying to do his accounting program at Pitma Week, who dropped by Kayode Smola. We had a lot of friends that would drop by the office then, and we had a lovely time. All of us knew that there was only one way to success, and it was through hard work. So it was a very, very lovely time seeing each other trying to survive. We all relatively were children of average family, civil servants, and all we knew then was that we needed to succeed. Everybody was working hard. This is Tiwa, um, Demola Bakri's son. I just wanted to say congratulations to you, Dad. Um, since I was young, you've always told me that putting in hard work would pay off. So I'm glad to see that you're finally getting the recognition that you deserve after putting in years and years of hard work. Um, thank you again for everything, and I really hope you have a great day. Thinking back now, it's, it's, a, it's a good memory. Looking at everybody and thanking God for where we all have gotten to. It was at that period I remember, incidentally, on a particular day when I was in court. Then my dad was still sitting as a judge. I think he was in Ota. So I had a matter in Chagamu High Court. And um, we had the phone ring from the judge's chambers in open court. We saw the oddly went in. He came out. Court session was going on. And he whispered something to the judge. I was just there as another lawyer. And the judge, shortly after my case, said, Mr. Bakri, your father said you should see him in a burglar. And I was wondering, okay. So apparently my dad had called the high court in Shagawan. I was wondering what it was that needed to. Rather than go back to my office in Lagos, I came straight to a burglar. And I went to my father's chambers and I said, Daddy, they said you called. He said, yes, we've been looking for you. We called your office in Lagos. They said you were in court in Shagamu. That's why I called Shagamu and him. He said, what's the problem? He cannot believe it. My father said, you have just been appointed the vice chairman of Abel Tanot Local Government. I was like, eh, what did they do there? That was my first question. And that I was to be sworn in that afternoon. 
It was very interesting. Apparently, between the King Adeyemi and my late uncle, the King Adeyemi was then Secretary of the Government, and my late uncle, we call him Baba Crown, Prince in Kabakri, they had submitted my name to be nominated as the Vice Chairman of an interim government then at the not local government. So that's how I woke up in the morning as a lawyer and I became a vice chairman by evening. I was to report at the local government. I was at the local government at Dr. North for almost a year. That was the government that ushered in the um, Obasanjo government, the transition from the military to the civilian. We were to midwife the election in 1999. So, at age, I think I was about 32 then, that was when I was appointed the vice chairman of the local government. I must tell you that I didn't have any experience, I didn't, but I know, what I know is that every morning, my dad would call and say, remember the child of whom you are, don't go there and go and... Um, He's very resilient. He's very deep. He looks at issues from angles, not from one angle. And even as a son, when he gives you advice on issues, you've got to look at it twice. And uh, I love the company he kept, his friends. Yeah, so I remember my experience then at the local government. I know that it's a civil servant that will tell the political office holders that let's do it this way. This is how you can do it to cover your tracks. And I used to wonder, why, why are we doing this? There are things to be done. I will share an experience and it's an interesting one. I didn't realize it until I was told. They said, the easiest way for politicians to make money is for them to say in the local government, Oh, we have cleared the road to this extent. Said so before the auditors come, the road will have grown again. How can you say whether they cleared it or they did not clear it? Whatever you said, you have paid. And I keep wondering, sincerely, if there is sincerity in the mind of everybody. Nigeria is a potentially great place. The experience at the local government shaped me, I must say. Then I went back to practice. And that's another experience. Between the nine months to one year that I worked in the local government, it never happened that anything would happen to us. My practice was not waiting. And I seem to have lost all my clients. Because if you were not there physically, they are not willing to deal with anybody else. So for me, it was another startup. By the time I finished from local government, I had to start. And that was led, that was what, what led to my moving from Lagos to Abuja. My experience in Abuja, I went for the bar conference in 1999. I stayed with my friend, Bayo Adeyemi, who then was working at the National Assembly for one week. And I looked around Abuja and said, this is a beautiful growing place it was just still developing then so i asked what do lawyers do here the number of them were just selling properties and making good money you don't need any skill then to be an agent in abuja so i thought to myself what they do i can do but what i know they don't know a year later i repackaged myself moved my wife and then and a son to go abroad and I relocated to Abuja. Lovely experience for me. I thank God for that particular move because Abuja, God actually blessed me in Abuja. I worked with Chief Afeba Barola. Before Chief Afeba Barola, to get a soft landing, I worked with my late boss, Chief Chike Chibwe. I joined Chief Chike Chibwe in July 20, 2000, July 2000. Unfortunately, Chief Chike passed on in October 2000. And I was looking at the man at the line and I was saying, this man, 
My life is tied to yours. I came to Abuja because of you. Now you are dead. What am I going to do? I practice. I continued this practice for a while. Then I was invited by Chief Afebo Warola to join his firm. I joined Chief Afebo Warola, myself and um, Dr. Lumide Ayemi, who are in the Abuja office. And we had a good time together in Abuja. We thank God, shortly after, I moved on to set up my own office, the law office of Dimola Bakri in Abuja. At the law office of Dimola Bakri, I was able to utilize the experience that I've gathered from different places that I've worked. Shafir Barala was an expert in political and electoral laws, and that was also my fault. Then we were doing also commercial. At the law office of the Mola Bakri, we also were doing that. And that office I ran for 10 years or 12 years thereabouts. My family had moved abroad. I had started my own practice. We were doing a lot of cases for different people, I networked individuals and um, companies. They what we did in that office, by the grace of God today, can be found in a lot of law reports. Then, I needed to move on. I applied to be a senior advocate because I had met all the requirements. The first year when I applied, I was not shortlisted. I think it was about the office or whatever. The second year was about 2012, 2013. I was shortlisted, but I didn't make the final list. It was a little bit frustrating, very frustrating for me. Then my great friends, three of them particularly, who were already sitting on the bench, in the way to console me, said, Demola, why don't you come to the bench? I said, no. I'd been invited to the bench years before, but I, I, I didn't want it. Then something happened in September 2013. Summer that year, myself, Justice Ogunfura, Justice Adeni, Lulu Onoboru, I think I'm Justice Jibodu, Justice Okushoko, had been together on holiday. And the judges among them have said, well, why don't you come to the event? I said, no, I was not interested. So in September 2013, Yosu Kushoko called me. I, was, I remember clearly that day I was having a meeting in the office of um, Chief Olujimi in Abuja. When I told him, ah, let me, sir, let me pick this call. And I went, I picked um, Yosu Kushoko's call. He said, Mola, where are you? I said, I'm in Abuja. He said, ah, um, they're about to start an appointment process in the States for judges. And um, I think you should apply. I said, TJ. As my, as my personal friend, I used to call him by his first name. I said, TJ, I am not interested. Go and give your appointment to those. He said, Demola, you are on speakerphone, of course. At that point, I, he said, there are two other judges here listening to you. I said, ah, so you mentioned their names. I don't want to mention their names for privacy. I said, ah, my lord. He said, okay, I will call you later in the evening. I said, TJ, don't bother to call me. Today is Thursday. I'm home tomorrow or Friday. I'm in Abelkuta tomorrow. Let's see when I come to Abelkuta over the weekend. So on that Friday, I had even forgotten that I promised him. In the evening, he just came to my house at about 6 o'clock. I was surprised because um, TJ does not touch you, does not joke with um, his prayers. It was before 7 o'clock. And he said, Ademola, are you home? I said, I'm home. He said, I'm coming to see you. It was during Ramadan. He said, ah, TJ, where are we going to break our fast? He said, don't worry, let's go to the Ubufora's house. The wife has prepared for us. I was thinking, Ubufora is not a Muslim. How come we're going to break fast in his house? So TJ carried me, and we got to Ubufora's house. And both of them surprised me. I will never forget them. When we got there, rather than food, it was the laptop. He said, we are preparing your CV now. We're going to prepare your CV right now. So they both ambushed me. They prepared my CV and then submitted my CV to be appointed a judge of the state. I'm grateful to both of them 
I thank them for their support. There are other judges who I must also recognize in that particular process. Justice Mabe Kodye being one, Justice Jibodu, and a host of other judges that knew me as a younger man, just like hear me. I must always remember all these people who then said, we want you on the bench. To crown it all, when my CD was submitted, the Solopade saw it and said, come and see me. I went to see her and said, they were like, all this while, you weren't thinking about I said, well, it is where God wants it to be. That's the story of how I became a judge. I decided to move from being a senior advocate to being a judge. That itself is a story of another day. I remember shortly after I became a judge, the current attorney general, Mr. Fagbini, saw me. I said, you this boy, don't say hello to me. We were doing everything to make you a senior advocate. You decided to go and become a judge. Said, ah, ah, you had a good practice. And my answer was that is the judge, judge it meant for people who do not have good practice. He laughed, he said, You are a naughty boy. I must also recognize Mr. Yusuf Ali, Professor Shikwito. All of them have been very, very instrumental to my career. I thank them today for where I am. I refer to all these people at every point in time in my career. They've been wonderful. I pray that God Almighty will be with them as well. I'm a very proud father about Demola and all my children in particular. All of them, they are all wonderful. Without being egoistic, their eldest sister read economics as the general accountant. Demola read English and has a degree in law. By the grace of God, he will appoint the judge. The LACWA is functioning as a director in Federal Inland Revenue. She read accountancy and she did the MBA. Wasn't they read English and she has a master's degree in media communication. So I thank God. Yes, if I had not been a judge, hmm, what would I have been? First, I need to refer back to my late mother. If you had asked my mother this question, you say, ah, that man would have been an electrician. Because I remember that um, back then, when I was growing up, my room was always wired. That they would say, don't go into this room before you get electrocuted. Because there is always one wire connected to one thing. I remember that one particular one that my, my room was wired to my door. That once you open my door, the music will start. So my mom used to say, I am my love for music would probably have taken me to be a DJ. I remember growing up, that was my interest. Whenever I used, whenever I carried my mother's car out, it was with records, cassettes, amplifier. I remember my friends, they used to call me a mobile DJ. I still have a minimum of about eight Bluetooth speaker for different things, even now. Because music is my life. I enjoy different kind of music. So I probably would have been a DJ if I was not a judge. And God had said Amen to my prayers. Without any input of mine, the National Judicial Council decided to send me to the Gambia to support the Gambian judiciary, where I was found worthy. And um, the Gambian judiciary appreciated me. And the Chief Justice of the Gambia recommended me for this Caribbean appointment. I've been in the Caribbean for some time now, and by the grace of God, I think I've been able to do my bit to represent Africa. I thank God for all this, and all I can do is to thank my God all the time. Hello, Nemo, son, Oba, Ogo. Hello, Lulu, Ameba. Hello, Nemo, son, Oba, Ogo. Fore, Lori, me.